Okay, in this screencast we're going to be looking at homeostasis, uh, which is basically how the body responds to keep uh, everything in balance. So a definition of homeostasis is it maintains a stable internal environment of an organism despite changes to the external environment. So um, despite changes uh, around it in, in temperature, um, carbon dioxide, oxygen levels, it keeps everything inside the body um, basically at an optimum level uh, so the cells can function. Two main mechanisms that organisms use for this are nerves and hormones um, that we're probably a bit familiar with already. We know that nerves happen only in animals, they're quite fast, they don't last for a long time and they follow a specific neural pathway, so the path of the nerves. Whereas hormones operate in both plants and animals, um, they're, they're a little bit slower acting, although some act quite quickly, but not that, that very fast uh, pace of nerves. Um, they're long lasting effects um, and the effect is to uh, allow um, a response in many cells, in many target cells. So when we're looking at homeostasis, what we're really looking at is negative feedback. And that's where um, the, the response reduces the intensity of the original stimuli. Um, so it returns it back to that optimum level. So if we're thinking about a, a particular stimulus on, on an organism, um, it causes a, a response in the body and the stimulus is reduced. Okay, let's use this diagram here to consider the concept of negative feedback. Um, and we, let, let's consider our first example here um, being uh, what would happen uh, in a house that maybe had uh, ducted heating. And we set our thermostat in the house uh, at, at say 22 degrees. And you know, if it gets a little cold in the house and the temperature drops below 22 degrees, the heater turns on and warms the house up, returning it close to that optimum temperature. If it reaches a little high, the heater turns off and the temperature slowly drops back down, gets close to that optimum point. If it drops below, the heater turns on again and away we go, keeping the, the temperature close to 22 degrees, returning it to that optimum level. We could look at the same thing with the human body. Uh, which has a, a, a set point, I suppose, of around about 37 degrees. Um, if our temperature gets a bit high, um, we, we start sweating, um, we have vas vasodilation, and our temperature drops, getting close to that 37 degrees. If it drops a bit low, vasoconstriction, shivering, hair stands on end, and away we go again. And we have the same sort of thing. Our temperature goes up and down, our body responds to keep it near that optimum temperature, always reducing the stimuli. If it's a bit cold, warming us up again. If it's a bit hot, cooling us down, trying to keep us as close as we can to that set point or optimum temperature, which in this case is 37 degrees. And we could imagine similar things happening with, with other things in the body. Um, oxygen or carbon dioxide levels in the blood, um, calcium levels, uh, the amount of water, all, all those sort of important uh, components of, the, of the, the body. Now there's a particular uh, model that's a really good framework for looking at uh, these responses by the body. It's called the stimulus response model and you might be a bit familiar with it already. Um, we, we'll have a quick run through and look at a few examples. Um, First off, we start with the, the stimulus, um, whatever is the, the body's um, detecting. The receptor is where in the body um, this message is received um, and what, what cells this occurs at. Uh, for a lot of responses in the body, uh, this will occur at the hypothalamus. The next, the next refers to the, where this control or message is, is passed and, uh, and managed in the body. Quite often um, that's with, with hormones or with nerves. The effector is where in the body that the response is occurring. And the, res the response is actually what happens in the end. Um, and in the cases that we're looking at uh, of, of a stimulus response model, we're going to have negative feedback where that response actually reduces the original stimuli, again, getting it close to that optimum temperature. So let's run through a few examples. This one here, we're looking at temperature, and let's look at the example of a high body temperature. So the stimulus would be that high body temperature 
Um, that message is received in the hypothalamus, which is a, a section of the brain. Um, and the, the control of this response is by the thyroid gland uh, releasing thyroxin. Um, and that causes the body cells, which are the effector, um, to increase the metabolism. So they're just working faster. Um, and that produces more, more body heat. And the, the negative response we have is the body temperature is actually lowered, which reduces the original stimuli. Now that's just one of the responses um, to having a high temperature. Um, the, there might be lots of responses by the, by the body. We know that um, vasodilation and sweating also could occur. Um, but this is one of those responses. Our next response here is, is looking at calcium. Um, so if our stimuli was high calcium level in the blood, um, that, that's detected by um, cells in the thyroid gland, um, which release a hormone called calcitonin. Um, and that causes a, an effect in the bone cells. Um, and the, the high levels of calcium, the calcium is actually stored in the bones and can, can be used later. Uh, and that lowers the calcium levels in the blood. There's, an opposite, there's also an opposite effect if the calcium levels are low, where that, that calcium stored in the bones uh, can, can be used and, and used to increase the, the levels of calcium in the blood. Our next example here is um, of water and the water levels of the blood. Um, so we're going to assume that the, the, the individual is quite dehydrated and they have a low, a, a low level of, of water in the blood. And the receptor here is a hypothalamus, again, an important part of the brain. Um, and the message is actually controlled uh, by a hormone called ADH, antidiuretic hormone, released by the pituitary gland. Um, and that is causing a response in the collecting ducts in the nephrons of the kidneys. And, and these nephrons are, are, are more able to reabsorb the water from the urine. And when it's able to do that, um, the, the, it can reabsorb the water, the water in the blood increases. Okay. Uh, again, negative feedback. Let's look at yet another example. This one here is with carbon dioxide levels. Uh, we're gonna look um, at what happens with high carbon dioxide levels. The receptor is um, some cells in the brain, um, and the message is controlled quite quickly by nerves um, that, that, that go directly to the respiratory system. Um, and the effector here is the muscles in the diaphragm, which, which um, start moving quicker, and the response is an increase in breathing rate, increase in breathing rate, which causes the carbon dioxide levels to decrease. Okay, our last one we're going to look at here is for glucose. And look, this is a really great example. It's used all the time um, because it shows really clearly um, how the body can use uh, some hormones uh, to maintain homeostasis. Now we're going to look at the example if there's high levels uh, of glucose in the blood. Um, and the receptor here is going to be some cells in the pancreas. Um, and they're going to cause um, more insulin to be produced. And the insulin acts on cells of the liver and that causes glucose um, to be stored as glycogen. And when more glucose is stored, that causes the glucose level to be lowered, that negative feedback. So the glucose uh, level in the blood will now be lower. Hopefully those examples have helped. Um, you certainly don't need to remember every example, but you, you should be able to apply um, some information to this model and be uh, familiar with which bits fit where. If you need to rewind and, 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 and pause on some of these um, examples, it might be a good idea to pull them apart quite slowly if they um, seem to be going a bit fast for you. Uh, good luck with homeostasis and um, stimulus response models.